If you get rid of the thermometer, it doesn't reveal the fever. It's like if you get rid of the independent press, then people are not aware of the oppression that's happening. Duke Performances approached me and and said, you know, the, the Rubenstein Library had recently acquired the, the Radio Haiti archive. Would you be interested in creating a piece? So how do we tell this story? You know, we knew we wanted video projection. It took us a while to decide that we definitely wanted dance for, you know, for certain. And of course, you know, I, I'm a musician, so music was always very central to the process. You know, I started to give a lot of sort of anecdotal information about my family and my family history and my personal connection to this archive, whether it be recognizing certain moments in the history. And that's when Kyoko kind of, I think, had this aha moment of like, well, your story is pretty interesting, actually, and why not include this as part of the telling of Radio Haiti? I like to work in sort of devised theater where a very collaborative process where we're creating something original with the artists that are involved in the collaboration. There's a component of this that feels like it's a live documentary in a lot of ways, you know, a historic documentary. But um, I always felt like, you know, it was really, really important to connect to audiences, not just through intellect and understanding the facts and the history, but like obviously on an um, emotional level. And I felt like Layla's own story is just really interesting and in not only how her family um, sort of intersects with, um, you know, Jean-Dominique and Michelle and the radio station, but also just this question of what it means for Layla to be Haitian, Haitian-American. that Kyoko and I delved into the archival recordings, you know, the more that it would evoke memories of Haiti for me and memories of uh, my grandmother, Jackie, who I spent two months with when I was 10 years old. Everything is really intentional. Almost all of the voices that you hear are this combination of archival sound recordings from the archive of Radio Haiti, as well as an interview with Michelle Montas, who alongside her husband, John Dominique, ran uh, the radio station for many years. There is good people in the government. There is always choice. And we are just learning how to choose our rulers. It's really about me sort of finding my, my voice through this archive, finding my, my Haitian-ness, finding my American-ness, and, and finding my place in, in this story. Libby.